Thank you, Marco, for giving me an opportunity to tell you guys about the, the Skydweller story here. So Skydweller, here we go. Skydweller is the first atmospheric pseudo-satellite. So what does it mean? Skydweller is a plane that's going to fly for 30, 60, 90 days. It's, in, it's appropriate, I tell the story here, that it's based upon the Solar Impulse 2 aircraft. And we've combined that with some Spanish talent, some American talent here in Europe. And we're now turning this into a drone that flies perpetually, okay, 30, 60, 90 days. You know, it, it represents $255 million plus dollars of investment over 20 years. Um, started in 2002 by Bertrand Picard and Andre Borsberg. Bosch, uh, um, it's flown around the world. Um, and it's now being modified in Spain uh, to help provide a safer and more connected world. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's, the total addressable market here is very large, okay? You've got sustainable monitoring, overwatch. Let me give you an idea there. Um, just monitoring exclusive economic zones. So illegal fishing, for instance, is, uh, accounts for 30 billion of the 80 billion uh, fishing market in the world. So being able to monitor and help protect the world's oceans. And then you talk about telecommunications too. So you, you know, Google, Facebook, these guys try to do it with balloons. Uh, a plane is the most efficient way to go through the atmosphere. Um, and we believe that this is going to help address the usage gap. So there's 4 billion people in the world that aren't digitally connected. Only 600 million really aren't connected. The other people have 2G and 3G, which means they're not really digitally connected. So if you talk about that, and this is a comment by uh, the Minister of Defense and Transportation, uh, Minister Bosch in Luxembourg, the importance of this. If we're gonna have a safer world, so that includes enforcing of, of poaching uh, laws in Africa and stuff, you're going to need something that, that monitors from the sky. Okay, to catch the poachers. And you want to do that with zero carbon footprint. So this is the true answer. It's a breakthrough capability that provides surveillance from the, from the sky to enforce uh, illegal poaching, uh, to, to catch illegal fishing, things like that. And let's talk about communication. So this is, this is, a, very, uh, this is a huge market. And you've got lots of different people trying to address this. You've got Elon Musk, you've got Be Bezos. They're all trying to connect people. You've got um, uh, AST, Space Global, which is trying to connect people uh, from space with a, a very large phased array. But they're going after kind of the density there of remote people. They're trying to address the, the connection problem, the, 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 co the coverage gap, that's 600 million. I'm going to go after, and Skydwell is going to go after the usage gap. So the 3.4 billion people here in the airborne non-terrestrial. So that's not the, the dense city that are in uh, the dense urban uh, city centers. It's kind of the suburban rural, 20 to 500 people per square kilometer, um, which is a huge market, especially where the operational envelope of Skydweller, which is about plus or minus 25 degrees latitude around the world. Okay, so it's not necessarily for Denmark in the winter, but it's a great tool in Brazil, in Africa, um, Kenya, Tanzania, Nigeria, those places where the, they don't have a big, uh, not a big share of the, the population has internet. This is like 2.7 billion people in that, in that particular operational envelope. We worked with McKinsey, so McKinsey came up with an estimate that if we were to capture 30, 50% of this addressable market, you're talking about 1,500, 2,700 planes. So this is, this is scale, and these are not small planes. The, the Skydweller aircraft, which is based upon the Solar Impulse 2 aircraft, has the wingspan of a 747 and weighs less than your Range Rover. So think of a 72 meters, it's big. I try to, I bring some people in and every single time I bring them into the hangar, it's like, wow, I, I thought it was big, but I didn't realize it was this big. And you need that if you're going to try to service what we're trying to do here. So give you a, a, an example in Brazil, and we did this in conjunction with Telefonica, which is the largest mobile phone uh, provider in uh, Brazil. They just bought a bunch of 5G spectrum. They did it, Telecom Italia, and the third largest one. They have to cover 9,000 villages. So you're going to have to build 9,000 more towers in Brazil 
in, in rural areas in the next 10 years or they're going to pay a big fine because they have to do that. And that's, so we did an analysis in conjunction with McKinsey and, and Telefonica, and, and you look at it, and there's 152 planes would provide the same as 6,000 towers approximately. So that's 6,000 towers that they don't have to build. They don't have to, you know, tear down the forest. They don't have to lay utilities out there. They don't have to do the backhaul. There's, it, it's a massive capital expenditure that they have to expend, and it's a lot of wear and tear on the environment when they do that. Another use case is if you take Africa, which is on the other end of that you know, 20 to 500 people per square kilometer. If you take the Africa side, you're closer on the, the you're up on the higher end of that uh, spectrum. And there, you take Tanzania. Tanzania, 65 million or 62 million people say, 13 million, 14 million have 4G. The vast majority only have 2G or 3G, so they're not connected. So we're gonna come in and at a very, very low cost price point, we're gonna give them 4G data. So for a couple bucks a month, they're going to get 4G data. They're going to connect those people. You're going to unlock that intellectual capital there that's, that's tied up, that's not digitally connected right now. And we can do that with, in Tanzania, we did another uh, analysis with McKinsey on this. And, you know, you're talking about 40 to 80 planes, and you're covering the whole thing, and you're giving people who, who don't have, who aren't digitally connected, you're going to digitally connect those people. There's also, when you're doing that, you can also do persistence uh, sensing and com uh, communication, so forest fires, things like that. Um, it, it's a very well uh, relevant uh, tool. Another thing you can do for the plane, as they were talking about before, we could, connect, we could collect different kinds of phenomenology on the data side. So you can only collect certain things from space. You can't see through the canopy that you can from a plane with a LIDAR or a synthetic aperture radar. You can collect very, uh, a lot of very uh, interesting information about soil moisture content, things like that, that you can't get from space. You're only going to collect these phenomenologies from uh, uh, an airborne asset. And then that would lead you to, to, be, to provide the data for the data alliance, uh, alliance that would uh, allow for environmental study and health monitoring. And last, our, our investors, are, our biggest backer is Leonardo here in Europe. Um, so Skydweller represents a true international aerospace company. We've got 20 different nationalities working for us, um, both here uh, in Europe and in uh, the United States. So thank you.